A proposal to cut workplace safety funding during pandemic. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by UKG. Ultimate Kronos Group offers HR solutions to connect modern workforces. UKG.com. Our purpose is people. I'm David Brancaccio. First, a new list of people who will be advising President-elect Biden is out. Marketplace's Nova Safo joins us here. What can we tell from these names? Well, we're seeing former Obama administration officials on it, also people tied to major tech companies, including Amazon and Google, and critics of big tech who want more antitrust scrutiny. Now, big tech executives outnumber critics on the advisors list, David, but still, Biden, during the campaign, signaled there could be more oversight to come for the tech industry. And among economic experts, there are advisors with union ties, progressives, including those focused on reducing economic inequalities, as well as executives from the banking industry. So it runs the gamut. And the assignment for these Biden advisors? So these are members of agency review teams. They're mostly volunteers. Their job is to understand the operations of various federal agencies to help with a smooth transition of power. Now, these advisors would typically be embedded within the government agencies they are tasked to review. That's not going to happen right now because the Trump administration has not yet recognized Biden as the winner of the election. The General Services Administration hasn't made that normally routine designation just yet, David. Nova, thank you. It's not just the pace of presidential transition that's a focus in Washington. It's not clear if there's more pandemic stimulus anytime soon. And lawmakers face a December 11th deadline a month from now to keep the money uh, that the federal government needs from shutting down. Yesterday, Senate Republicans unveiled a flurry of spending bills, and one of them cuts $11 million out of the worker safety program, OSHA, this during pandemic. Marketplace's Megan McCarty Carino has more. The role of OSHA has never been so important, says Debbie Berkowitz with the National Employment Law Project. We know that workplace exposures are a significant driver of this pandemic. She says under the Trump administration, though, the agency has pulled back and is doing little enforcement. OSHA's website says it has received more than 10,000 COVID-related complaints. The agency has issued fewer than 200 citations since the pandemic began. So if OSHA doesn't act, if OSHA doesn't inspect, there is nothing. Workers do not have the right to sue an employer under the OSHA law. She expects under the leadership of President-elect Joe Biden, the agency will become more aggressive. But that would take more resources, says James Brudney, an employment law professor at Fordham University. A more substantial and visible enforcement presence would be very helpful. OSHA says with its state partners, it has 2,100 inspectors responsible for the safety of 130 million workers. I'm Megan McCarty Carino for Marketplace. The S&P future is up eight-tenths of a percent now. The NASDAQ future up 1.1 percent. We're also covering just published research that used massive cell phone tracking data to find that bars, restaurants, gyms, and houses of worship are among the locations associated with the most coronavirus infections. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by C3.ai. C3.ai software enables organizations to use artificial intelligence at enterprise scale, solving previously unsolvable business problems. Learn more at C3.ai. And by Avalara, simplifying sales tax compliance with cloud-based solutions. Avalara automatically integrates with more than 700 of the most widely used ERP and e-commerce solutions. Avalara, tax compliance done right. In at least 20 states, annual interest rates on payday loans can run into the triple digits. They average 400 percent in Nebraska. On Election Day, Nebraskans voted overwhelmingly to cap payday loan rates at 36 percent. Marketplace's Samantha Fields reports. Right before Christmas in 2010, Phil Davis found out that his car needed repairs. He still remembers that a decade later because he and his wife had been saving up for Christmas. But then they had to spend that money on the car. At the time, we had a three-year-old son, and we didn't want to tell him that there wouldn't be a Christmas. So they went to a payday lender and took out a $500 loan. At the time, thinking, you know, we'll take this out, we'll pay it off, no big deal, we'll make it work. It ended up taking them three years to pay it off. And by then, Davis says, it had cost them... Over $5,000 in fees for that $500 loan. 
Stories like that are common in Nebraska, where Davis lives, and in other states where payday lenders charge triple-digit interest, says Kieran Sidhu of the Center for Responsible Lending. Our research has looked at the big picture and proven that the horror stories in terms of the debt trap are the rule rather than the exception. Capping interest on those loans at 36 percent or less makes a big difference, she says. Consumer advocates in Nebraska have been pushing state legislators to cap rates for years, says Aubrey Mancuso of Voices for Children in Nebraska, to no avail. So this year they took the issue to voters and won with almost 83 percent. It's been a long time since 83 percent of Nebraska voters have agreed on anything, if, if ever. And so this is one of those issues where the elected representatives are really out of step with where people are in Nebraska. The payday lending industry fought hard against the cap. Lobbyist Kent Rogert says now that it's passed, what's likely to happen is that 90 percent of the stores that are open now will close at the first of the year. There's no profit in it. We cannot pay an employee to sit in there with that type of a return. That has happened in most of the 16 other states that have passed similar caps. If payday lenders do pull out of Nebraska, Aubrey Mancuso of Voices for Children says that's okay. Nebraskans have other options. In Omaha, we're really lucky because we do have a nonprofit small dollar lender in the community. Our credit unions across the state also have a small dollar loan program. And both of those, she says, are better options than payday loans, which tend to just put borrowers deeper in debt. I'm Samantha Fields for Marketplace. Today is what retailers in Asia call Singles Day, that huge e-commerce sales extravaganza, much bigger than post-Thanksgiving Black Friday Cyber Monday. Alibaba of China was taking in 583,000 orders a second in the middle of the night. Singles Day keys off all the single digits in today's date, November 11th, one 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 one. Before it was an online retail orgy, it was also called Bachelor's Day, a kind of anti-Valentine's Day for singles. All that said, Alibaba's stock went down 10% today with Beijing proposing new antitrust rules for online platforms there. Our coverage of that is in the Marketplace Morning Report podcast feed later on if you miss it on the air. I'm David Brancaccio, Marketplace Morning Report from APM, American Public Media.